What is A-B testing? How do we solve A-B testing interview questions? What are some examples of these questions in data science interviews? You'll get the answers to these questions in today's video. But before we drop some knowledge, please take a moment and subscribe to our channel. What is A-B testing? Nope, it's not the Jackson 5 song, but it is easy as one, two, three. An A-B test is a controlled experiment, sometimes called the split test. It's when you're trying to test whether something like a new feature or a new color will produce a different result than the current state. For example, is this new feature better? Does it really lead to more clicks? Basically, what you're trying to do is split a group of people into two halves. Offer one half, option A, and then the other half, option B, and then see which option performs better. These are important tests that help businesses make decisions. So again, it can help you decide which features to keep and which ones to remove. Like it can help you decide which shade of color is better. You can see that even changing the shade of blue can lead to a lot more money, but it can also have the opposite effect where you're pissing off and irritating your users, like Instagram did when they tried to change their feed to be more full screen in order to keep up with TikTok, and the users in the test group just hated it. So now that you know what an A-B test is and why it's important to business, let's discuss the concepts that you'll need to know on a data science interview. Solving an A-B test question requires both a technical understanding of the theory and the math behind it and an understanding of the business. So getting to the theory and math behind it, an A-B test is a type of statistical test. Specifically, it's a two sample hypothesis test most of the time. When you do statistical hypothesis testing, you're basically comparing a sample data set against the population data. The two sample hypothesis test is when you use statistics to see if the difference between the two samples is significant or not. In this case, significant meaning do we really think what we're seeing is real or do we think it's a false signal? In an A-B test, you need two hypotheses, your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis says any change you observe is purely from chance. Basically, the new feature that you're proposing makes no difference to the business at all. It's the same as your existing feature. Your alternative hypothesis says that there will be a statistically significant hint real difference between your control group and your test group, meaning that there is a difference between the new feature and your existing feature. So here's a good way to start an A-B test. Let's first think about your hypothesis. So in order to develop your hypothesis, you need to use the PICOT method, P-I-C-O-T method, which stands for population, intervention, control, outcome, and time. Okay, so now let's take an example. This example is a real data science interview question by Facebook. Instagram wants to know if making the shopping page more prominent would affect the overall spending of users. Now, how does Picket work? In Instagram users, what is the effect of making the shopping page more prominent on spending compared with the unchanged shopping page over the course of three months? You probably won't have the resources to do an A-B test on the entire population of users, so you need to come up with a good way to select a sample population. The key is to randomly sample in order to ensure that you have a good, even distribution of users. Like you don't want a group of users who happen to be all millionaires. That'll just skew your results since the other group is probably not all millionaires and their behaviors would be completely different in terms of how they spend their money. Once you create your hypothesis, pick your sample population run your A-B test. And once that's finished, it's time to analyze your results. So let's continue on with this Instagram example. Let's say you tested your hypothesis on a thousand users per group. You find that your control group has an average spend of $50 with a standard deviation of $15. Your test group has an average spend of $53 with a standard deviation of $16. That may not seem like very much, but with large sample sizes, you can be highly confident in rejecting the null hypothesis, meaning that there is a difference between the new page and the old page. For example, if you have a p-value of 0 0.000016, it means that there's only a 0.0016% chance that what you got in your A-B test is pure luck or chance, which basically means that there is a real difference between the two shopping pages. But there's a ton of different factors when choosing the right test. For example, you might have a sample size that's less than 30 users, which would really never happen in software. But in case you're in the pharma industry and you're running a clinical trial, this could be a real life scenario that you have to deal with. So in which case you need to know what test to choose. And in this case, it's a T-test rather than a Z-test. If you believe your sample mean could be greater, less than, or the same as a control mean, you'll choose a two-tailed test. 
So basically what I'm trying to say is it's important to know the theoretical concept of what you're actually doing and why you're doing it in order to be successful in both the interview, but also in industry when you're on the job. So let's apply this to an interview or to industry in general. When answering an A-B test question, the interviewers won't be interested in only testing your theoretical knowledge because you'll rarely work in ideal circumstances. So they'll want to see how you actually handle real world challenges. Or said another way, when you're on the job, you'll always have challenges. So how do you actually deal with them? There are basically two ways to deal with them. You don't or you do and answer typical questions like, how do you plan to compensate for a small sample size? How will you minimize interference between the control and test groups? How will you make a test robust if you can't run it for as long as you want? The last two questions are especially important in real life scenarios. There are five different types of A-B test interview questions. Business focus questions, experimental design and setup, resolving experimentation issues, data analysis, future investigations. Any of these five types can be asked on an interview. So let's go through an example of each type. Business focused questions. In this question, Robinhood wants to encourage more people to create an account and plans a campaign where they would give a few free stocks to new users. Describe in detail how you would implement an A-B test to determine the success of this campaign. Of course, what Robinhood doesn't tell you is that you'll be forced to sell your stocks for your own good. Anyways, on to A-B test type number two, experimental design and setup. An example question is, what are the ideal conditions for A-B testing or split testing? Basically, they're asking you, what are the assumptions to make an A-B test valid? This is a theoretical question and you should rely on your knowledge of statistics in order to answer this question. Resolving experimentation issues. We are running a test with 10 variants, trying different versions of our landing page. One treatment wins and the p-value is less than 0.05. Would you make this change? Here, they're trying to test if you can deal with real life scenarios and edge cases that make A-B tests hard. It's sort of the opposite of the last question. The answer to this question is always, it depends. Never say yes or no. They're really testing on your thought process of identifying edge cases and real life scenarios of what can go wrong. Data analysis. Given data from two product campaigns, how could you do an A-B test if we see a 3% increase for one product? The question is testing you on whether or not you understand how to set up A-B tests and whether or not you understand the underlying theory. Future investigations. Which roles on your product team should be involved in your test? How would you make it easy for them to be involved? This question is testing you on whether or not you have real industry experience and how you've collaborated with teams in the past. They're basically looking for stories of past experiences. Like any data science interview question, remember to approach the A-B test interview question with a sense of curiosity. You're being tested on your command of statistics and math, but also on your thinking process and your ability to look at the big picture. Good luck and have fun. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.